That's got to be the best part I've ever seen. So it would seem. Hello viewers and welcome to a brand new episode of Trash Talk on Lancer, no room for a wallflower edition, where I talk stuff about mech. It definitely has been a while since the last episode so let's get going already. In this episode, Kidd, from Interplanetary Shipping North Star. Captain William Kidd was a Scottish privateer that was rather famous for the rumor and eventually legend of the hidden treasure he supposedly left behind from his last act of piracy, but honestly, forget about the rumor, because the tale of how he reached there in the first place was even better. During his final privateering expedition against Pirate and the French, the Royal Navy yoinked his crew because he didn't salute practically right outside the goddamn port, the replacement crew was mostly consisted of criminals and actual pirates. A third of the crew died of cholera before even reaching their destination, and his ship just plain unable to find any pirate or French vessels to attack. Since he refused to attack any English vessels he kept stumble upon, his crew was kinda on the verge of throwing his ass off the boat, so he set sail to West India to attack some Indian vessels instead. That's when he found his greatest prize, the Quidak merchant which is filled with gold, silk, and spice. Except it was captained by an Englishman. Since his crew was real tired of his shit, he had to let them loot the ship, and this got him and his crew officially declared as pirates, which didn't end well for him and his neck when he returned to England. Named after the historical figure, Kid is a rapid construction platform with a crew of loyal subalterns to build anything you need that won't betray you ever, most of the time. Anyway looking at its stats, Kid is actually a size 1, with 2 armor, ok health, and excellent repair cap. Its evasion is not really good but it's very fast. Its save target is also very nice with an ok sensor range. Compared to its evasion, its E defense is far better, with a good tech attack and 10 freaking base system points. Its heat cap is terrible though, and it only has a single weapon mount, a main. As for its traits, it has three of them. First, reroute power, for once per round, the kid can destroy one of its own deployables or drones as a quick action, as long as it's not deployed or created in the same round. In doing so, a nearby ally could get 1d6 plus 1 over shield, or a nearby hostile get exploded for 1d6 plus 1 AP energy damage. If you detonate a systems without limited tag, it is now destroyed and you have to repair it to reuse it. Also you will look kinda stupid because second, recycle, allows kid to restore one limited charge to a limited drone or deployable systems at the end of the scene if you use reroute power. And finally, rapid deployment, in the very first round, kid can immediately deploy or activate any drone or deployable systems as a free action. Basically, kid is IPSN version of Hydra that can deploy more stuff onto the field far faster than Hydra could and treat both drone and deployable with more expendability. As for its core passive, the kid has the Jolly Roger, a goddamn weaponized satellite somewhere in the orbit. To use it, you must first recalibrate the satellite, which is tracked with the Jolly Roger dice that starts at 1. This dice ticks up by 1 whenever you deploy a drone or deployable, or use a tech action that targets one of your allies. Each option however only tick up the dice once per round independently, but if a hostile uses a tech action against your allies within your sensor range, the dice also gets increased by 1, with no limit. To actually use the Jolly Roger, you have to expend a quick action and this can only be done once per round, this reset the dice back to 1, and you can choose one of the following choices, if you can. When the dice is at 3 and above, you can use plunder, which scan all hostile within a blast 1 area and give them lock on. At 5 and above, you can use Swindle, which force all hostile within a blast 1 area to pass a system save or get impaired, jammed, and slowed until the end of their next turn. At 6, you can use Shiver Timbers, which fire a goddamn laser that can go through anything and force one hostile character to pass an agility save or take 3d6 AP energy damage, half on a success. All these effects do not need line of sight from you, after all, it's the satellite that's doing all the work, and it works all over the battlefield too no matter what. The satellite can work past most objects or terrains, unless it's something that's literally impossible to crack like blink shield, because honestly it sucks if you suddenly can't use a major part of your mech for no good reasons because the game master said no. And also it's fucking hilarious when a random mech just has a killsat that can shoot through hundreds of meters worth of rock just because it can. Anyway, as for its core power, the kid can activate the Jolly Roger for skull and bones, which for the rest of the scene, increase plunder and swindle effect range to blast 2, and shiver timbers now affect all characters in a line 10 zone. 
This means the kid should has its role reassigned to controller because holy shit that's a powerful core power considering how crazy Jolly Roger is already. With Jolly Roger, you can effectively control the entire battlefield no matter where you are, but to rapidly gain Jolly Roger dice for the satellite, you need to get close and support your allies, so your build of the kid will most likely reflect on that to make the most of it. Anyway, for the rest of the license, you get black spot targeting laser and pepcock in the first section. Black spot targeting laser. Because if you gonna shoot something, might as well hit it on the second try. Low damage, excellent range, but unique and costs one, systems point to mount. Also, on hit, drone, seeking, and nexus weapons and systems gain plus one accuracy on attacking the target until the end of their next turn. And on critical hit, the target also gets locked on. Basically, if you want to set up accuracy stack against a target, firing this before the big damage shot will do very well. Pepcock, or problem exists between chair and chassis, is a quick tech system that allows you to reboot an allied mech system within sensor range and line of sight to end all tech action effect on them, and any NHP cascade, and render them immune to all tech actions, from allied or hostile, until the end of their next turn. This sounds extremely good, which is why there's a drawback. The systems will apply side effects to the target, these effects are immediate, and don't count as action or reaction, any movement caused is also involuntary, and you must roll a dice to determine it. Number 1, your target is jammed until the end of their next turn, number 2, your target moves up to their speed in a direction chosen by the game master, number 3, your target immediately moves 3 spaces towards the nearest character, allied or hostile, and immediately suplex them with improvised attack, if there's no target, just move, number 4, your target falls prone and take 2 kinetic damage, number 5, your target vents 1d6 heat and deals the same amount as energy damage to nearby characters, and number 6, your target immediately stabilizes and chooses what to do. So yes, that's like, 5 kind of bad side effects with one extremely good deal. This systems is frankly so good when your party is filled with mechs that's bad against tech action, most of the pain brought by the system side effect isn't even comparable to the actual pain dealt by tech using NPC, so really, this is a good deal no matter what you get, except being jammed, aside from the kid frame itself, you get field approved brass ignorant modifications and omnibus plate in the second section. Field approved brass ignorant modifications, time for a supercharged attack. With a quick tech action, you can pick an allied mech within line of sight and sensor range to power up their weapon. When they make a ranged or melee attack roll, the attack damage cannot be reduced in any way at all, and after attacking, the recoil caused them to get knocked back by one space in any direction, also on hit, the target must pass a hull save or get knocked prone. Also, this effect only ends when your target actually hits something, or until the end of the scene. This is once again, a very good tech action to apply onto your allies just before they fire their big guns, and if they have a super heavy weapon, that's even better. Omnibus Plate, the influence enhancer, after expending a limited charge, you can deploy the Omnibus Plate with a quick action within range 5. The plate cannot be moved is flat, and does not block movement, so exactly the opposite of what an omnibus should be. What it does instead is it can hold a single size one or smaller drone or deployable, giving them resistance to all damages and plus one size to any burst or blast effect they generate. Effects that require adjacency also now affect targets from range 2. This makes anything placed on top of the plate far more powerful than before, a minimum of 50% increase in area effect. Tempest Drone, Assassin Drone, Aegis Shield Generator, as long as it mentions burst, or blast, or adjacency, it will work and it will work better. But this also means that you need to put the omnibus plate at place that you think will matter because it can't be moved, so better pick a good spot. In the final section, you get Forge 2 Subaltern Squad and Smokestack Heat Sink. Forge 2 Subaltern Squad, Mechanized Lackeys. For once per round with a quick action, after expending a limited charge, you can deploy the Forge 2 subalterns to start working on a construction project in a free space within line of sight and range 5. The project is immovable and gains plus 10 health at the start of your next turn when it is completed, but it is cancelled if it's destroyed. The projects you can make include, number 1, emplacement, which is literally just Fortnite, it becomes a size 1 emplacement that's also 3 spaces high upon completion. 
At its top is a shielded platform that can fit characters with a combined total of size 1, and could be entered or exited when standing right next to the emplacement with a quick action. The top platform basically provides hard cover for anything inside it, and still let them see out of it. The top platform also has a roof that character and deployable could stand upon with no cover. Number 2, Snare Foam, when finished, this project keeps pumping out foam that makes burst 2 zone around it to be difficult terrain, destroying it stops this effect. Number 3, Damping Station, this project makes any allied in burst 1 wet, giving them immunity to burn and clearing all existing burn 2. And number 4, Armor Pack, which latches onto any allied character that moves close to them. This gives the character plus 1 armor, even above the maximum armor limit, for the rest of the scene, but also immediately destroys the project. And just to make it clear, the subalterns do not exist on the board, they just make the project, and then return to your mech when you are done. They are basically in a quantum state of simultaneous existence and non-existence. Also if you overcharge to use the systems again, you can break the once per round limit but only if you start the second project right next to the first one or else the subalterns will start unionizing. This systems is very tactically flexible, just about anything you need on the field could be made by these subalterns in seconds. Emplacement is especially useful to trigger tactician easily, and damping station would be very useful when facing enemy that like to throw burn around. And hell, this systems has limited 6, that's more than enough for any mission. But there's one question remaining, could you start using the subalterns for your college project? And finally, smokestack heat sink, short term cooldown, long term explosive. After expending a limited charge with a quick action, you can deploy a pylon nearby that can absorb heat within burst 2 zone of itself. Any heat dealt to characters within the zone gets absorbed by the pylon, no matter the source, and before any reduction, including resistance. However, once the pylon reaches 6 heat, it explodes, and everyone in burst 2 must pass an agility save or take 1d6 plus 3 AP energy damage, half on success. Object and deployable gets hit automatically, and any excess heat absorbed by the pylon that's part of the action or effect that detonated it is dispersed with no effect. Any mech with poor heat cap or vulnerable E defense is suddenly very safe thanks to smoke stack, and honestly if I have a choice between getting cooked alive and getting exploded, I would start putting stat into hull. As a conclusion, the kit is a drone and deployable loving mech that just likes to throw all of it out and see what sticks on the wall, a goddamn kill set that complements that helps very much. Its license is packed with powerful deployable and tech action systems that can support its allies very well. If you want to take aggressive support to the next level, and you also like to surround yourself with drones or fortification, the kid might just be what you are looking for. Hello there, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell button. If you really want to support my channel, you could visit my Patreon page, or buy me some Kofi, links in the description. Anyway, have a nice day.